What's up, guys? It is uh, Wednesday night, and we're uh, some of our parts we ordered finally came in. Some a lot of our fuel parts came in. Uh, we got the Wabro 450. We got the new hanger, and we got the JB tuned uh, fuel line upgrade kit. So let me just show you guys what's going on. And for the guys that have never done this before, or if you have any questions about the JB tuned stuff, maybe this might help you. Maybe this might not. But just give you an idea. Because uh, I didn't find any videos out there. At least I didn't try real hard, but I didn't find any videos on JB Tune stuff and how to do this wiring side of it. And um, I don't know. Watch it. It might help you out. It might not. So, anyways, uh, when I bought the hanger kit, it came with uh, came with the OEM pump, OEM style pump. And it looks something like this. Just kind of sits in here, kind of like that. That hose, that hose basically goes to that little. Uh, little pipe bar right there right there um there's a big line and there's a smaller line so that's your feed and that's your return off the pump now what we're doing the reason why we're upgrading and we're upgrading past the 255 is we plan all these i plan to run a very very high base on the fuel fuel line um i've been reading the injector dynamics uh, recommendations and they're saying like okay here's your basic formula you look at how how high you can run your pump and then like your pump PSI say it's 100 for example and then subtract your maximum PSI because you have to climb for every pound of boost you go you have to climb in the pound of fuel pressure also it has to match and go and climb so they're saying okay if you give you an example say the pump can supply 100 PSI and you're trying to only boost 20 you should start at 80 okay so it's pretty simple math so you so the 255 when i did the calculations it will not supply enough power or supply enough pressure for that matter not really not very volume but pressure okay at 80 pounds and on top of that it draws a lot of power it's going to run you're going to run into like wiring issues potentially so i said oh man that's just going to be a lot of just work down the road Plus, you never know. If we're running nitrous on top, we're going to need the extra fuel. So um, that's why I opted to, to go this route. So that's why we rebuilt uh, uh, the fuel pump harness. We got the 12, we got the 10 gauge lines going to it. And uh, we got the Wabro 450. It should supply power if we ever need that much power. Um, so we're just, we're just getting the backbone of the system, you know, kind of set up okay even though we might not fully use it utilize everything kind of want to do this because you never know if we ever want to do 600 horsepower on this setup all we would have to do at that point is probably just swap a turbo out and we got 600 okay so or at least we're really close to 600 money a tune or something like that but it'd be pretty close so let me go over the jb uh tuned uh update and what they're doing because it was really confusing on the website on how they did it. i mean i read it like four times and i was still confused and i looked at the video they had on there and then it made better sense so basically in a nutshell um that's your feed and that's your return line for your uh there you go feed and return line so your fuel pump goes here it goes to the rail it comes back and just dumps back in your fuel tank right so there used to be um a wiring that's that well, that's where your positive uh for your fuel pump went in right here and i basically grinded that off it's a little bracket it's a black piece where the connector hooks up to it uh i grinded that off because i'm about to drill that out so i can fit this plug in place so this is the wiring plug okay wiring plug that should go there and then this is the the eight size line okay eight size because I don't know. I'm a I'm a person who really likes to do things the right way first time around, or don't even try, or don't even touch it. So basically, my Furo runs on eight size line. If you guys haven't noticed, it's eight all the way back, all the way back. Okay, so it's on eight up until that massive fuel filter. So for me to do this, it'd be stupid not to go to eight also, instead of running like a six to an eight. Do all these conversions, right? So you start with eight, end with eight, basically. So we got eight. We're gonna have to drill this guy out. 
And in that spot, we'll put that there. Okay? So that's going to be like that. So how they do, their kit is actually pretty uh, pretty, uh, pretty smart. I wouldn't say it's genius, but it's pretty smart. So the OEM sends fuel out on this line, and it comes back on that line. That's the return line. What they're doing now is now you're going to send it out on this line, cut that out. We'll cut this out and put it in place. So, so basically, you swap these uh, these lines. Send it out on this, so it goes out that way. And then the return line is now uh, coming back in on your uh, coming back in your feed that you had before. It's actually pretty cool. So now instead of a say a six feed and a four back, you have an eight feed and a six back. It's actually it's actually what the doctor ordered. So let me install that, um, and we'll see what we gotta do. I will have to use a, oh, I call it a pyramid bit. Somebody correct me, let me know what that is. I call it a pyramid bit right there. Uh, we'll hollow those out, grind that off, hollow that out. And like I said, there was like a little bracket here. I used the Dremel to take care of that. But yep, let me see what I can do. Check back in a bit. All right, so hour and a half later, of hacking and drilling and all this other stuff it's it's finally done it ain't pretty do I recommend it I mean I'm on the fence on that on this kit I'm really on the fence because it's the average guy won't be able to do this because you, you need a lot of I would even call it kind of specialty tools drill bits and things like that um, I didn't think it was going to be this hard, put it that way. I thought it was going to be wired up and running a couple of uh, hoses around and be done and grow and grind a couple pieces off and that'd be it. But it ended up being a lot more. Maybe I installed it a little bit wrong. I don't know. Let me know. But anyways, this is what I got. Um, let's just start from the bottom and go up. So the, the 450 is, it, it sits on here just fine. But the problem is, like the OEM on the on the uh, outlet, it actually just connects directly to that. So you get a you get a decent sturdy feel here. But since this is now wrapping up around over here and then going out, um, this thing literally it, it shakes real bad. Um, so what I did was just triple zip tied it, another safety zip tie, and then I zip tied that to that with the piece of heat shrink on the uh, incoming line just to maybe help prevent with our rubbing issues. Well, how to do that, um, just for my sake, I like to keep things predictable, you know. So with that, uh, it goes up. I do like these little clamps. Those clamps are good. It kind of just goes up and it snakes up like that. It looks like I didn't cut anything, but actually I cut a lot. Um, I think maybe I installed this. A little too far to this bar but at the same time that's the actual hole that the original um, return line came through so I cut the return off and I just drilled a hole and it kept on enlarging it until I can fit their uh, thing on it and it was a lot harder than I thought because this piece actually comes out pretty far you could you could kind of imagine this piece actually comes out and even even that piece zoom in on this a little bit See, I had to, had to cut this because that piece actually extends almost to here. You can see the grind marks a little bit. Uh, maybe it's, it's behind the broken piece, but I had to cut maybe a quarter inch of it off this way and then angle it out like that. Okay, that was done with a Dremel. Um, so yeah, you're gonna need a Dremel. You're gonna need one of these, one of these guys, and a whole bunch of just. Okay, a bunch of just these drill bits you know so it's like I said, it's not a it's not a straightforward design and it goes out and at first there's a there was a little there was a little support piece that was right here and you can still see the remnants of it kind of right here right there well there was a support well, there was a support piece that held this piece onto that well that was in the way of this that was in the way of this uh, bulkhead connector, so I did. In, I, I tried to save as best as I can. I really wanted to save the support system, so I actually shaved or grinded that piece down. And hopefully, it'll clear, and it did. It did clear it, but then it didn't have enough 
turning space for the 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 line that's coming in. So I had to cut it. Maybe could have just bent it, but I don't know how to cut it in order to fit this piece. Well, it was just to give me enough clearance to fit. But still, as you can see, it's super tight. I just bent it as as a uh, as little as possible because you don't want this to break. If you break that, you're pretty much screwed. You'll have to tap in here somewhere else and run another line into it, which I didn't want to do because that's the only reason I bought this kit. You're supposed to use this fitting. And let's see, on top of that, when this fitting comes in, and then it comes back in here. So now, well now this one used to just shoot directly on the pump. So if you can imagine, your incoming, incoming uh, your, your return line that's sending all the fuel back, it's just going to straight up shoot that pump when it comes back. So you got to stick a screwdriver in there and just straight up bend it to the side. So that way when it comes back and it shoots, it will shoot off the pump instead of onto the pump. And that's one thing that, uh, I don't know, manuals just explain. Uh, let's see, the other thing was, uh, I don't know if I was supposed to get the connector that goes to this. Probably wasn't, but this does not, that's not long enough to go through that connection. So you're still going to buy, you have to buy that connector that comes in here, which I'll probably have to buy, which I don't want to buy. So what I'll do is I'll probably uh, maybe enlarge those holes and just run a big line that goes right through to it. I'll probably just end up doing something like that. Not exactly sure yet, but that's the that's what I got. You know, so that's the overall look and feel of it. You know? uh, of course, that's going to be 90. That's not that's not going to stay up like that. That's just a test thing. It is a truce, it's a size 8, so that's good, that's good to go pretty much. And uh, yeah, let me know what y'all think, man, because like I said, it's a little, it's a little on the hard side. I mean, it is a little on the hard side. It's not a, it's not a simple, like, uh, you know, bolt up and bolt on and go. So really, somebody should make a solution for this. Someone really does. I mean, how hard is it is to, to make a circle? and put a 45 degree bend in it right because that's what it looks like something that can hold this i mean come on someone's gotta make it it don't look that bad someone's gotta make it anyways that's what i got what's up guys turn the light on so you guys can see all right what's up guys connery once again you guys a quick update on what's going on I know I've been doing a lot I've been recording so um, the major thing is uh, fuel tank is here fuel tank I'll show you guys a fuel tank in the fuel stuff here's a fuel tank it's a brand new fuel tank and the fuel sending unit is in there is done uh, I do have to order some fittings and other things like more fittings actually but that's done if you give it 12 volts right here Wabro 450 will fire up. Uh, you actually hit a little bit of a drawback, setback. Uh, this Odyssey battery, I've had it for uh, five years. It's taking a poop. So uh, it, although it's never been really used, it's been on the shelf for five years. Um, I have to contact Odyssey and see if they give me a warranty of some kind. Because um, I hear, I hear, it, I think it's got a five-year warranty. Maybe I might be at the five-year warranty also. Um, Wiring, wiring. Um, let's see what we got. I don't think I showed you guys this yet. My gauges, the dual side gauges, the dash, and then at the end of the other video I had the the dash kind of like, I don't know, kind of acting weird. So I, I was thinking it might not be getting the right amount of power. So I ran a dedicated power line to it, and it's still doing the same thing. So there's definitely something wrong with the. Uh, with the uh, cluster itself now, I think. So, I'll be on the lookout for one. I really just need parts. I don't actually need a cluster itself. Uh, but on the other side, this is what uh, I've also been doing. Uh, let's see. So, everybody knows about this. This is my dedicated 12 from straight from the battery, alternator stuff that goes back towards the battery. And now, um, now that I've been doing a lot of uh, gauges and stuff like that, they need a, a good source of uh, unswitched or a good source of switched power. So that's it right there. 
Uh, I've tied this relay off to the key, uh, the ignition. So as soon as you click on, power's relay, power goes from here to here, and we got a switched power source. And then on top of that, we also need a ground bus. So that's the ground bus, and uh, yep, there it is. So all of my wires, ECU, sensors, stuff like that, that'll terminate right there. So that should be good. And uh, that's pretty much all I got for right, right now. Oh yeah. Show you guys the engine harness. Engine harness, uh, I've already pretty much made a decision. We're still gonna run through this. And I did buy the plug that fits on there. So that's the plug, but I'll have to cut a hole in the plug to run it through. And uh, sure that's gonna be wide band right there. Um, that's gonna be wide band and that's gonna be uh, the um, uh, boost, boost, boost controller. So you know, boost controller right there. So yeah, those two will go through the other line and engine harness will go through the big hole. And engine harness is pretty much done on this side of the engine, but from this side back, uh, we can see what I did. Engine harness. The top side is done. I'm fairly happy with that. But the bottom side, as you can see, there's still bare wire sticking out, you know? And of course that mess. So that's that's kind of the goal. Um, clean that up, run it through the firewall, plug it up the ECU, power the harness, ground the harness, build a bunch of grounds for the engine head, the block, and the transmission. So we gotta ground all that. There's about seven wires that needs to go from the ECM harness to the dash. So we gotta run those. And here's the uh, ground for the harness. Gotta put that back in. And uh, pretty, pretty much should be done at that point. We should be able to fire like, the ECU on. Should be able to load a calibration. We should be able to read the throttle. We should be able to uh, look at the throttle plate. So basically, feedback off of this sensor should be there. That's the map sensor. It's a four bar. I'm thinking about swapping it back out for a two. Because four bars is too much. Um, yep, I think that's pretty much it. And the, I still gotta figure out the transmission stuff. So, transmission stuff is just, I gotta go to the junkyard. Five to five speed transmission. Should have the plugs on there. And special thanks to uh, my cousin Vilai. He brought me a, uh, a, a fan plug. So, that should be good too. And I've also gotta research the fan stuff a little bit. I think I have to run a relay system to it. And uh, I haven't done that yet, so we're going to have to do something like that. And we're going to have to interface the fan plug to the fan wire on the engine. We're on the uh, that side of the harness. So there's a couple little things we got to do. Um, not hard, but just trying to find the wires themselves might be tricky. Um, as far as the door is concerned, we're not changing anything on that end. Uh, inside... It hasn't changed, but yeah, that's all. That's, all, that's all what's been happening. Car's back on jack stands. I did go underneath the car to inspect the fuel lines, and they are corroded as shit. So the plan is already. I was already planning on doing this because um, we're gonna run the new fuel lines all the way back to the tank. Uh, there's just no way around it at this point, so we're gonna do that. Just gonna order all those things in sooner or later, probably later get the electrical done and we will be a happy camper if that all if all the electrical is done by Jan 1 2019 I'll be a happy camper um, after that the next thing would be uh, fabrication and as far as fabrication goes uh, what what I mean by fabrication would have to be uh, actually let's not start let's just break that into two categories it's gonna be manifold and intercooler piping fabrication versus body fabrication because uh, body fabrications that's not really up to me my brother has to take over on that and then uh, but in terms of uh, intercooler fabrication or intercooler piping fabrication and exhaust fabrication I've set myself a goal for June 1st which will give me almost six months yeah pretty much five months because a lot of my fishing stuff is coming up and I'm up to double duty down on that 
And plus, I can't weld, so I have to go learn how to weld somewhere. Got a couple of Facebook friends that are, that are willing to teach me, so we'll we'll double down on that. So four months to learn how to weld, and engine needs to fire up Gen One. I mean June first. So if all goes according to plan, uh, if once the engine fires up, we'll set up some dyno dates and stuff like that, and we'll get a dyno uh, maybe in June, July, maybe even August, depending on what's going on. Because we still have to figure out how to do this this part of uh, hiding um, the tires, you know. Well, so we built, we bought some tra uh, e trailer um, of trailer fenders because I've seen that being done on motorsports where they put the the put they literally cut uh, the grooves for the uh, trailer fenders. They put that in. It looks all right. I mean, I ain't gonna complain. It looks okay, but it ain't it ain't the prettiest. My brother's got some other ideas. He's a fabricator, a body fabricator slash body man. Uh, he's got some pretty cool ideas. We'll have to look at those when the time comes. And on top of that, suspension's pretty much done. Unless if we want to change out bushings and stuff like that. Um, fuel system's pretty much there. All the headlights work. Which, uh, the only thing that's bugging me right now is just the dash. So we'll have to either get a new dash just to try it out. Or we'll have to uh, just, you know, just live with it. Uh, what else? Uh, moonroof, tail, tail lights, all that stuff. That's all. That stuff all works. I think the, I think the sunroof has. It's not working right now because all my other controls are not plugged in. So once I plug those in, I think it'll work just fine. Uh, we gotta worry about a water bottle. Um, not, not for right now. But there's a lot of little things that should, uh, should be, you know, taken care of and should be okay. But anyhow, that's what I got. That's what I'm tasked with do to do for the next couple of days. Um. I know today is uh, the 25th, today is Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, but t today, for the rest of the day, I might not be doing nothing. I might, might, might not. Tomorrow, probably not free. Uh, the day after that, free. And then I have to go back to work on Friday. And then I got four straight days to, to really crunch down. So in those four days, uh, I'm pretty much going to ded dedicate myself to the car. So we got at least five solid days to, uh, to get this project going. Hopefully we don't have any setbacks. I've bought as much stuff as I can to prepare for this electrical wiring stuff. So hopefully I bought enough. Plenty of wires. As we'll see my drawers. Plenty of wires, wire cutters, electric tape, all the heat trick you ever want. Bunch of just electrical tape. More fuses. My favorite butt connectors. And all my tools. So, yeah. <sighs> See the finished product, eh?